Hey guys, Key from Kegland, and today we're doing a little show and tell on our Bruzilla 200 liter systems. Now, all of you guys out there who have heard of the Bruzilla name in the past would probably know of the Bruzilla single vessel systems, which are fantastic when you get up to a certain level. However, with all of the single vessel systems where you're pulling the malt pipe out of a boiler, and you've got that sort of multi-purpose vessel, I suppose, you do get to a stage where that mop pipe gets just simply too heavy to move. The other thing is you start to get to a large enough production scale that really, you know, the three vessel type systems kind of make sense. So the 200 litre Bruzilla is the, is the uh, only three vessel system that we sell at this stage. And, um, you know, as a, a powerful system that a small brewery could use or a small, small brew pub or commercial operator could start up a microbrewery with, I think this is a great system to begin with. Um, you know, a lot of the uh, usage of this type of system is also transferable onto really large systems. When, when you go up to a 2,000 litre brewery, a lot of the controls and a lot of the way you run the brewery is very similar. Now, the Brewery comes as standard without the rims, but if you want to do, um, you know, step mashing and stuff like that, then the rims uh, add-on can be purchased separately, and the control panel has already got the controls here, so the rims uh, can be wired in separately at a later time if you want to. Um, now, this is a two-pump system, uh, so uh, one of the pumps is actually controlled with the VFD, which uh, is really cool. We use the Danfoss VFD on this unit. And all of the elements uh, on this unit are a very low watt density as well. And they're all controlled via the uh, Omron uh, PID controllers as well, as you can see. So the first thing you'll notice with the design is we've got this brewery, so you're standing in between the tanks. So it's got this platform here. When you start to get to these size of tanks here, being 200 liters, they are pretty big. And if these were, uh, you know, on the ground or on a stand, it's you sort of it's hard to sort of get in and you know stir the mash and stuff like that. So we felt it was important to have a platform in this brewery, so it was more ergonomic, and then you could easily access into the three vessels. Uh, we've also got another lid as well, which is sold separately like this, um, which is our distillation lid. So um, some of you guys who want to do brewing. Uh, but also want to, I don't know, make a gin or make your own whiskey or something like that. You can get a distillation lid which has the four inch triclover opening on the top and then you can attach one of our larger four inch stills and we've got a number of those we're working on uh, at the moment. Um, yeah, so uh, let's have a closer look and you can see what you think. So firstly, looking at the kettle, you'll notice the kettle is a little bit different to the other two vessels we got here. So on the kettle, we've got the, uh, these clamp uh, lids here, and that's so we can attach that distillation lid that I was talking about before, just on the ground there. Now the distillation lid, when it's on top of the kettle, you can also use that um, as a fume extractor as well. So some of you guys, if you, uh, for instance, wanting to do, get a steam condenser, you could use that four inch triclover to basically take the steam through a steam condenser, or you could just basically get the steam out of the uh, four inch opening there and exhaust that out to outside of the uh, building if you wanted to. Now the kettle's pretty straightforward. Um, it's got the laser engraved markings on the inside. Uh, also, we put a little bit of a hot blocker here. So once you've done your whirlpool, um, you know, this, this uh, blocker here is just to block some of the hops. And of course, because this brewery is all CIP, you'll notice the spray balls already fitted on the lid here as well for you. Um, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it there. As you can see, yeah, there's those laser engravings on the side wall there. So you can see 200 liter is the rated capacity, but the max capacity actually when it's brimful is closer to 250. Um, yes, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much it on the kettle. Now going over to the HLT, um, HLT is really, you know, not super exciting, I suppose. You've got a temperature probe. These big long elements, as you can see, they're low watt density, so they are quite large. And all the elements can be removed with triclover that you can see just on the side there as well. So you can just whip them out and clean them down if you needed to uh, take them out for some reason. Now with respect to the mash tun, obviously you wanna make the grains really easy to empty out and you know really efficient so you're not wasting a whole lot of time. So we found the easiest way to do that is get a wheelbarrow and just pull it up to the side of the mash tun on the ground here. And we actually have another chute, which uh, I don't have right on me right now, but the chute just attaches to the side of the door here and then comes down the front of the opening of the mash tun so it goes and directs the grain directly into a wheelbarrow. 
But uh, as you can see, the door opens like that and you've got a nice flat surface which is level with the door. So the whole idea behind that is you can get a shovel and scrape it out like that and you're pretty much gonna get everything and you're unobscured with no lips or anything like that to get caught up on. Um, and if you do need to remove the false bottom screen here, you can just basically undo these screws here and then this false bottom just lifts up. Uh, inside the top of the mash tun, you can see it's also fitted with the uh, CIP spray ball here. And we've got the sparge ring as well, which is in here as well. Um, and then a couple other ports in here over the side here. And you'll probably be recirculating through this one uh, over here, just to sort of diffuse the, uh, the, the wort as it hits and uh, recirculates over the grain bed. Also on the side of the mash tun, we've got this little sight glass, which some people find quite handy, just to get a visual indication. If you've got the lid down like this, you just got a visual indication. You can see the wort's running through and you can see the color of that wort. Uh, and you can see how that's sort of clearing up as you're doing a batch. So underneath the mash tun here, you've also got the option to fit the uh, rims tube under here. So look, I think it's highly recommended. It also means you've got a bit of extra power and you can crank up that, uh, that rims tube meaning that uh, you know, if you want to heat up water faster or something like that, or get up to your strike temperature a bit quicker, um, you know, they can do that. Or if you happen to miscalculate and then not hitting your mash uh, temperatures right on, you can really quickly get back up the temperature uh, if you've made a mistake in your calculations for some reason. Now this is the control panel. As you can see, we've got the Omron controllers here just on the left. So we've got the hot water, boiling water and the lauder temperature here. We've also got uh, one VFD controller on one pump and the other pumps just controlled manually. We didn't really feel it was necessary to use um, you know, two VFDs. So I've just got the VFT on one of the pumps here. So obviously for things like, you know, when you're recirculate, recirculating in the mash tun and stuff like that, a VFT is quite handy. But you know, when you're just trying to pump hot water, it's not really that necessary. So the pump hot water goes like that. You shouldn't really run the pumps dry for too long. So I'll just turn that on for two seconds just to show how it works. And then the VFD obviously is kind of nice because you can turn it on here and use this little dial to plug in the Hertz that you're after. And you can hear that pump just sort of winding up there and getting going, I'll just turn that back down. So you've got really good resolution of the speed control on that one. Um, and then you've got the other uh, heating which you can turn on and off quickly here. So you've got these uh, switches here to control that all illuminated. Um, and that is more or less the control panel. There's a lot of other features in the Danfoss uh, VFD controller. So it's definitely worth when you get this unit reading up all on the instructions of the Danfoss controller to see what you can do. So on the underside of the brewery here, you can see we've got the heat exchanger. It's quite a large heat exchanger. So when you go up to these uh, big commercial type of systems, you really need a heat exchanger, which you can easily disconnect with all the triclover. And you know, periodically, you would want to take this apart and clean internally. Now you don't have to do that every batch. Uh, you do want to make sure you've got a good uh, you know, CIP regime, which is also running through your heat exchanger. Um, but uh, yeah, every now and then you will want to do periodic maintenance where you actually take apart the heat exchanger. So um, yeah, that's why there's all triclovers all over that unit down there. Um, and then the other thing is the pumps. So these stainless steel pumps, that's one of the pumps over on the left side of the brewery. And then in the middle of the brewery, you can see the other pump just under there. So you can sort of fairly conveniently get to those pumps and um, you know, take apart the heads if you really needed to for some reason. They're quite powerful pumps. You're definitely gonna have more than enough juice to push your wort uh, to the other end of the brewery with those pumps because they're rated to uh, you know, uh, 0.75 kilowatt each. Now on the right hand side of the brewery, we've got a temperature gauge. This is to take the wort reading uh, just as it exits the uh, heat exchanger. And the other thing is as it travels along here, you can see we've got this funny little valve here and that's so you can basically oxygenate or aerate in line. So you can, if you've got sterile air, you can, you can pump that in there or pure oxygen for those high gravity beers. And that's why we put that sight glass in line here as well. So as the wort is uh, being um, hit with a little bit of air or oxygen, you can see those bubbles dissolving into solution through the site class, confirm you've got the right flow rate. And then obviously the wort comes out here and this is where you would connect your hose off to your fermenters. Lastly, you'll notice with this particular brewery, um, you know, on the walls, they've got a bit of thickness to them and that's because they're polyurethane insulated. So all of the three vessels here are all um, all insulated uh, and they hold temperature really well, which saves you a bit of power, but it also means that even if you didn't get the, uh, the rims set up, the single infusion on this type of brewery will work really well because they hold temperature so well. 
All right, well, that is pretty much it for the Brusilla 200 liter. I didn't want to go into too much, uh, you know, detail because this is the type of brewery where if you're going to buy this, you probably know exactly what you're after. Um, and you can always send us your, uh, your questions via email or in the comments below if you've got anything you want to ask about the brewery or need any other tech uh, specifications. Anyway, hope you enjoy using this uh, awesome brew house. I know we've already got a number of orders uh, for small microbreweries and stuff like that which are starting up, which are using this unit. Um, but if you want to hear about any other cool new stuff, of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe now or sign up to our Facebook homebrew community group. Heaps of other guys now on there sharing lots of tips and advice on how to use all our gear. All right, thanks for that and see you guys next time. Bye.